My name's Adam Crime. Um, Dan Hahn uh, could not make it. He had an emergency, so he called me last night uh, just before I went into my concert at Carnegie Hall uh, for <laughs> Handel's Water Music and said if I could prepare uh, a talk. Uh, so I did. Um, I graduated from uh, Mount Sinai a couple of years ago. We trained together. So uh, this is uh, his way of uh, getting me back. But um, I'll be talking about self-expanding versus balloon expandable stents in the iliac uh, arteries. So the data is, uh, is good. Uh, iliac arteries tend to be a favorable vascular bed uh, for treating uh, occlusive disease. So from a number of studies that have been done, looking at particular uh, devices, um, uh, different stents, whether they be self-expanding or balloon expandable, uh, the patency rates uh, generally do very well. Uh, the shorter the lesion, the better the patency. But we're talking about numbers that are well above uh, 80% uh, in most of these uh, trials. But the question is, you know, you're a new attending, you get excited, you have your first few iliac cases, uh, you get through the lesion, and then you have to decide, now what? Uh, if you're lucky enough and you have a CAT scan, you can uh, measure and uh, you know, make uh, a lot of these decisions about what you're going to use uh, before. But uh, in many cases, we don't have that luxury. And then you have to make a game time decision. And how do we make that game time decision? Well, uh, iliac arteries uh, in their uh, disease are something we're going to see pretty often. They constitute about a third of all symptomatic peripheral arterial disease. And the considerations uh, are very important. So how does the stent interact with the stent wall? Uh, there's a number of uh, uh, things that we need to consider, and we'll talk about them uh, as, uh, as I go through the talk. Uh, over distension, which may be um, uh, something that you'd want to do in this uh, vascular, but given generally the larger size of the vessels, uh, can be very problematic. So just by going from 10% oversizing, which is generally what's recommended, to 20% increases by 13-fold um, uh, the uh, wall shear stress, which is a, a problem uh, and leads to uh, uh, neointhymal hyperplasia, uh, as has been demonstrated. So what would the ideal stent be? Uh, ideal stent would be something that's easy to deliver through a small caliber sheet. Uh, you can actually see it uh, conform to vessel uh, uh, wall upon deployment. It opposes it well. It doesn't fail. It stays open for a long time, and it doesn't break. Uh, so we have good stents on the market, you know, thanks to our partners who, uh, in industry who, you know, come out with uh, new devices that really help our patients. But the problem biology has given us are these vessels tend to be calcified. Uh, they can be eccentric or concentric. They're very tortuous at times. Where the lesion is located, is it osteal? Is it at a branch point? Uh, and the lesion length. Uh, so biology doesn't help us uh, in designing the uh, ideal stent. And that's where, you know, our expertise comes in. Uh, so what are some of the differences between self-expandable and balloon expandable stents? It's taken from Rutherford's, uh, from the vascular surgery textbook. So the radial force, as many of you know, in balloon expandable stents tends to be higher. Uh, in self-expanding, it's considerably lower. Uh, self-expanding stents are more flexible. Uh, you can see uh, balloon expandable stents, stents given uh, the density of the material they're made out of a little bit easier. Uh, oversizing is not recommended in balloon expandable stents, whereas in self-expanding stents, uh, it uh, certainly is necessary. And treating lesions with variable diameter, this is uh, something that, um, you know, is very important in terms of uh, patency. If you're treating an iliac lesion that spans from the common into the external, you're talking about sizes of vessels that uh, can vary sometimes uh, dramatically. Uh, so one size doesn't fit all. Uh, and being resistant to external compression, uh, self-expanding stents tend to do a better job. And just so we're all on the same page, radial force is defined as the force required to produce a 50% reduction in the lumen diameter of a stent. Uh, I'm just going to skip this slide. This just goes over some of the same things we uh, talked about. So what are some of the pros of balloon expandable stents? Well, it's their high radial force. Um, so if you have a lesion that's a very reticent, that uh, doesn't uh, open up uh, very well if you pre-dilate it, um, uh, can be favorable. Uh, very precise deployment. Uh, that's very important, as I'll show in a slide coming up in a moment. Uh, osteo lesions uh, for that precise deployment, whether you're talking about the renals uh, at the common iliac of the aortic bifurcation or the subclavian arteries, um, there's certainly uh, much more uh, precision uh, with uh, the balloon expandable ones. And proximal common iliac stenosis, uh, many times we require kissing stents in these uh, uh, vascular bed. Uh, so those lend themselves very well to uh, precise simultaneous deployment. So this was a case I had uh, as a new attending. Um, this uh, uh, aorta has an iliac stent in it. It's about a centimeter. Um, and the interventionalists were trying to treat an iliac lesion with a self-expanding stent, but it watermelon seeded uh, out and uh, popped into the aorta. So just kind of floating there and just kind of scratching our heads what to do about it. Uh, we didn't do anything uh, about it. He was fine, didn't have any symptoms. So we just left uh, well alone be. Um, balloon expandable stents, some of the cons, 
Uh, they're less uh, able to maneuver through tortured vessels. They tend to be a little bulkier in terms of their delivery system. And you want to deliver them with a sheath because they can easily be, dis well, I shouldn't say easily, but they can be displaced while you're putting them through a tight lesion. Uh, these uh, stents are uh, susceptible to deformation uh, in arteries that tend to torque and twist. Uh, so they can uh, have a permanent conformational change in the stent. However, some of the newer ones that are out there um, being constructed of cobalt, chromium versus stainless steel, which is what some of the older ones were, uh, tend to be a little bit more flexible. Um, and as I mentioned, they're at risk for dislodgement when, while in transit. Uh, they should be delivered through a guiding catheter. Uh, aggressive oversizing with a stent with a larger balloon uh, will foreshorten the stent. And it leads more often to stent failure. And the problem is, is because the struts of the stent um, do not become, they become uh, uh, distorted uh, and they don't oppose the vessel wall as well as if it's properly sized, uh, and that can lead to uh, uh, failure and uh, premature uh, restenosis. Some of the pros of self expanding stents uh, they have less radial force and conversely improved elasticity, uh, ideal for lesions that cross uh, tortuous vessels, um, vessels with variable diameters. Uh, they don't require sheaths, um, just the you know, catheter that they're loaded on in order for them to be delivered. Uh, lesions in the external artery are usually treated uh, with uh, self-expanding stents because uh, the usual tortuosity of the artery lends itself to that. Um, covered stents in the distal external uh, iliac artery that are self-expanding can be very advantageous because uh, if you, this patient requires an open repair at some point, for example, a femoral endarterectomy, the last thing you want to do is clamp a, uh, self ex a uh, balloon expandable stent because you'll uh, likely permanently deform it and uh, be in even more trouble than when you started out. Um, so you can sew onto them uh, directly, so that's uh, more advantageous. And some of the cons, uh, the need for adequate uh, oversizing. Um, so again, you want to stick to about 10%. Uh, the stent can't be over dilated, so if you uh, misjudged or missized, uh, you may have a problem, but if you're undersized, you can rescue that generally by using a balloon expandable stent within the lumen of the self-expanding stent. And the real idea here is to get fixation at either end. You're not going to really make the diameter any bigger uh, as you're fixed to what you've uh, already deployed, but you can uh, fix it uh, that way. So the studies uh, are out there, and they tell us that stents in the iliac arteries works better than percutaneous angioplasty. Um, Self-expanding, balloon-expanding stents both work well. Um, however, uh, there, here's a randomized controlled tr trial looking at uh, self-expanding versus balloon-expanding stents. And as we know, the outcomes are good in general. Balloon-expandable, 89% primary patency, and self-expanding, 91 to 98%. That's what the um, current literature tells us. The inclusion criteria for this study was 70% diameter stenosis, uh, treating lesions uh, 1 to um, uh, 20 uh, centimeters, uh, or sequential lesions. Uh, patients were randomly assigned to self-expanding or balloon expandable. In some cases, they pre-dilated as necessary. And the stents that they used were EV3, not Medtronic. Um, Post-op, all patients were on Plavix uh, and aspirin, Plavix for at least a month. And the end point was looking at the primary study, uh, uh, excuse me, incidence of binary restenosis at 12 uh, months as assessed by duplex ultrasound and looking for uh, uh, PSVR of greater than 3.4. So the mean lesion length that they treated, and this is where, you know, the devil is in the details, was about uh, 41 uh, millimeters um, uh, in the self-expanding group and 33 millimeters in the balloon expandable group. Well, it doesn't really tell you where the lesion is. You know, was this a lesion that was osteal? Was this a lesion uh, that was uh, at a transition point? Uh, they didn't really account for that. It was either the common or iliac arteries. Uh, calcifications uh, at the bottom of the screen were about equal for, uh, for both. But what they did find was that in the uh, one-year uh, follow-up, the uh, primary restenosis for balloon expandable stents was higher than uh, self-expanding stents, and this was um, uh, uh, statistically significant. If you look at the Kaplan-Meier curves for patients with uh, primary patency, uh, those with self-expanding were 94.5%, and those with balloon expanding were 87%. So you're still talking about very good numbers. But the question is, is there an uh, ideal stent to use in this setting? And you know, the problem is, is that we just don't know uh, because there's a lot more detail uh, that needs to be parsed out. So some of the reasons why uh, self-expanding stents may lend themselves a little bit better to the uh, iliac vascular bed is that there's less radial force from them uh, that prevents less circumferential stress and subsequently enhanced near um, uh, proliferation. The higher elasticity might preserve uh, arterial distendability uh, to a greater ex extent than more rigid uh, stents do. So what's the take home? Uh, there's good outcomes for both 
stealth expanding and balloon expanding. Each lesion requires careful deliberation uh, to determine uh, which the optimum device to use. And it really is the experience of the interventionalist at the time of the uh, procedure that will uh, probably ensure uh, long-term success. Thank you.